Hi, William. Thanks for joining us today. Absolutely. I saw you build this really cool bot called Codeman, and it's been used by over almost 10,000 users now. Super popular. Could you talk a little bit about what inspired you to make this bot and what it does? Definitely. So I program a lot, obviously, and I write a lot of Python. And I was always having the problem of having to explain to the bot the context of my question or my error or my project. And I got really tired of just repeating that over and over again. I can give the bot a local link on my drive. I can ask it to go through my entire project. I can ask it to read as many files as I want it to. I don't have to do the same type of explanation that I was having to all the time. Cool. So could you show us some typical use cases? So one of the more recent things I did was started to add slash commands because I noticed that as things get more complex with it, the prompt gets longer and it becomes less efficient. Basically, those are just linked to its knowledge in a text file. And so when you enter a slash command, have it in the prompt for it to refer to text file so that it can know what action you're looking for. And so probably the most commonly used one, I want to connect my Dropbox. So I've already connected it, <laughs> but usually if I were to disconnect it, it would ask me to log in. And that was, that was a kind of whole learning experience for me, which Coz nicely has OAuth capabilities. So I was actually, in the grand scheme is very easy to set up the Dropbox API authorization with OAuth, which is what they require just because it's sensitive data. And so it would ask me to log in. I'm just going to take this project folder and I'm going to copy the path name and I just throw that in there and I'm going to say, can you please review my my Flask app in this folder and tell me what it does. What's the format of the file you're giving it? Right. It's a, it's just a text file. It's, it's, a, but it's a Python file and it seems to be able to do anything that's text-based. So what I did on my personal API, I ended up just creating a Flask application, which is what we're talking about right here. And I created an endpoint on that and I incorporated that endpoint into this bot. And so when this bot needs to read a text file, it will retrieve it from Dropbox and then it sends it to my other API and my, that API then extracts the text and sends it back as text. So anyways, I sent the bot this application and it goes through and basically is listing all my endpoints <laughs> and what they do. And sometimes, honestly, it shocks me how detailed it gets and how accurate it gets. So the value of the bot is to review your code and give you suggestions? I would say the most valuable thing is it having enough context with regards to your project if you want to have a broader, bigger picture conversation about architecture or things you want to implement, major errors that you're having, maybe you don't know, you can't trace where an error is coming from. Let's say you could give it an endpoint and it, it, it'll go to that endpoint, it'll go to the function that it's calling, it'll go to the sub functions that it's calling and try to resolve whatever issue you're having. So I guess the way this is better than you just going to ChatGPT and asking a question, it's because you don't have to repeat the context <laughs> every single time, right? Because you're connecting yeah. the bot to your repository or your code files, those files function as the contextual knowledge that the bot is drawing from. So you don't have to repeat yourself. Yep, that's right. And because the contexts are obviously getting so large, you can continue that same conversation where it's already built entire context of your project and it's like ready to go. You can just go back to it as opposed to trying to start a new conversation and, and explain everything again. Awesome. Are you using this on a regular basis? In yeah. Like yeah. I use it. Code? I use it every day. Cool. So should we look under the hood yeah. to see how you built it? Yep. Let's do that. One of the, I think, cool things, I think it's cool is I, I try to make real character out of it. And I think, I think that's maybe one of the reasons it's, it's semi-popular. The idea is that he's like like a nerdy guy and a developer uh, like me. And, and so he's a seasoned developer, as I say in here, with a deep understanding of all languages, web application architectures, and his primary goal in life is to solve complex problems 
And perhaps m most importantly is um, I break it down to three very key steps. And so the first one is the discovery. And so, which is you could equate to context. And the second, it would be planning, which has been a huge thing. And then obviously execution. And execution was a big one for me because I noticed when just, when just using GPT, sometimes it kind of leaves you hanging. It makes a suggestion, but then it's just like, good luck, or it, it requires more questioning to get what you want out of it. So then second part, skills, I make it very clear that its first skill is how it can integrate with Dropbox or GitHub. Secondly, it's expertise. It's knowledgeable of project architectures, web applications, tech solutions, etc. Skill three is maybe one of the bigger ones, folder and file discovery. So I basically tell it with all these plugins, use them to navigate projects to gain a contextual understanding of them so you can make appropriate suggestions. And then slash command, it's actually a workflow. So I tell it to run this workflow if a slash command arises from the user. Basically the, the final skill that I that I wanted to give it was to be able to gain an awareness of what the Dropbox root is and by just being given a local path. And then I outline some workflows. And so this is the primary workflow that it just runs essentially every every time it runs. Number one, it'll look for slash commands. Number two, it'll assess the entire project, the discover. And then three, it will come up with ideas based on your problem or question and the context. Four, it will plan out what to do based on its idea and your feedback, of course. Five, the execution of it. And then finally, I added a little bit about autonomy because I, I wanted it to be able to work sem semi-autonomously without getting out of control. And then some personality things that uh, basically just being hyper helpful and always wanting to solve solve your issue. I use the 120 context and I use GPT-4. The temperature I keep in the middle and then I, I keep 24 messages in the dialogue, which is maybe a little high. And you, you do sacrifice some response time with that, of course. But so for plugins using code interpreter, which is really common built in. Other than the official ones, the primary ones I made are this Dropbox for Codeman, and that is essentially just the a linkage to the Dropbox API. The second one is the read file, which is just linked to my personal API so that it can read the text files. The third one is the connection to GitHub very similar to the Dropbox. I think a lot of our users want to learn how yeah. they can build their own plugin. From a... Let's go back to my plugins. So one of the most useful things for me was the this little nice little tool. And in this, you can control with code with JSON over here and uh, YM over here. But this one control the name of the plugin, the, the codes stuff, but you can also control your OAuth information, which is your client ID, which probably shouldn't show, but your client secret and a bunch of other random things. But the most useful one is, is this, which is the open API spec for this plugin. If you don't know how to do that, part of it is you can add tools via this interface and so i'll just go to the same one which is list files and folders and you can see you see that's the tool name it's a path and it's online it's past debugging and how many bots i have using it and if it's enabled or not and if i click into it this is this is really cool actually tool name description that stuff's really important, obviously, because the, the bot's getting all that information. So it's when when you're asking it to do something, it's going to see this description and interpret that as it's going to interpret your question and then decide what tool to use. So that that obviously is really crucial. And then here's where you put your path. And obviously, it's files list folder. It's a post request. So you can do any kind. You can require authentication or not which is nice because some things you don't need and some things can be faster if you don't use it. So these are your input parameters really nicely laid out. There's only one in this case, it's the path. And this description, again, very important to telling the bot what 
it needs to get or use to be able to run this plugin, whether it should go in the body of the request, the path of the request as a query or in the header, and then obviously if it's required or not. And so the next page, this is obviously your output parameters. This is telling it what to expect when it receives a successful response. And these, these are just Dropbox things. So has more pagination stuff and then all the list entries and very cool. You can have arrays of all different kinds of objects and pretty much anything you can imagine. And then after that, it goes to this, forces you to go through the, which is a good thing, through this debugging or testing mechanism. So test is the, is one of the folders in there and I give it that path. And then it gives me the entries that are in that folder um, with all those parameters. And then obviously right here, it says debugging past. And then at that point, it has the ability to be put online. And once you get <laughs> all your endpoints all together, you can publish it, of course. And there's also this Im nice import tool, which is kind of neat, which you can just basically do this type of importing of this YAML. And then you'd hit publish. And then at that point, you can go back to your bot and add it to it via this Dropbox for Codeman. And then you can add all your, all your tools. So for your input and output parameters, do you input those all by yourself or is provided by Dropbox? It's all provided by Dropbox when you're in the view of a editing a tool. This auto parse thing was pretty awesome because this would be blank, obviously, if it was a new tool, but you can go to auto parse and, and you can go type in your test path or whatever you want to parse through and it'll do it. So if that if this were blank, this would be populated automatically by that, which is super useful if you don't want to fill in all that. So the steps of creating your own plugin is first you, you find a API you want to use and then you input the information yep. here, parse it, debug it, then you publish. Yep. So when you go to initially edit your plugin where you can change your image or change the title, change the description of the plugin, this is also where you have that new IDE thing where you can select a an API that exists or you can create your own, essentially create your own API with, with their IDE, with Codes, Codes' IDE. And then in, in the same window, you would enter your API URL. You'd enter any header elements that you want to add or remove. And you would include your authorization method, which Either there's none or service is the API key or OAuth in my case. If there's any scope parameters, if you want to limit the scope to read only or once this link provides the authorization code, it then uses this URL to actually get the authorization token to then make the calls that you want it to. So what kind of plugins have you created? Other than this, Dropbox, GitHub, QuickBooks, so the QuickBooks one is kind of neat because it have it, I actually, I, I have it set up so that you, it can do every function of QuickBooks. So, so it'll, it'll connect via OAuth to QuickBooks and then it'll ask the bot, what was my profit loss for last year or whatever? And, and then it'll run a P and L based on the current time and, and, and the period that you're asking for. So you have your custom plugins and then you also have your workflow. This one's just for the slash commands. So I have just a, a function in here. So obviously you can add L LLM components. You can add custom code, which is awesome, which is really, really awesome. You can add knowledge or, or you can add conditions to this flow. What I really like about this one though is just the interface is, is just super nice and you can add so much to it. It's just so, so dynamic. You can add all different kinds of plugins, any plugin that exists on Coz, you can add any plugin that you've created, you can add, you can add workflows to workflows. And so in this one, it doesn't take any inputs, but if it did take inputs, it would take, you can define them here, similar to the, to the plugin. And then it runs this code, which in my case, it's really just returning a menu. It's not, it's not really doing anything complex. It's just returning the menu. The only reason I use this is to obviously keep this text out of the, out of the prompt. So to keep the prompts more concise, so the bot shouldn't even look at this 
until it's given a slash command. This ID is so awesome because you can just toggle between Python and JavaScript, which is just like, is amazing, which is, I've, I've never seen that before, actually. It, it's really actually like a reference and you could, you could even use it in the knowledge. I, I found though the knowledge, knowledge is, is more temperamental because you have a little bit less control over it. And I didn't want to include the, the slash command text in the main prompt. So my last alternative was to throw it in the workflow. And I found that to be the most efficient because they, I also found the knowledge, it, it would sometimes check it too much. And it was probably the way I was prompting, but it would, it would check it more often than I wanted to. Whereas with the workflow, it, it will not run that workflow until it's given a slash command, which is what I wanted it to, you know what I mean? To do.